In this video I'm going to show you how to replace the PEI sheet on your Prusa Mark II or Prusa Mark IIs. And as I'm pointing in this video here, there are two uh, strips ripped out of the uh, centre of my heated bed. And this is where the PEI sheet is peeled away from its adhesive um, after a print got stuck on the bed. And this is after um, a long period of time of uh, bubbling of the PEI sheet. Um, whereby uh, the bubbles started to appear in random spots on the heated bed um, and also uh, variances in the live z-axis um, occurred and these were strong indicators that the um, PEI sheet or at least the PEI adhesive had failed and so it wasn't surprising that um, it eventually reached this point where the PEI sheet actually uh, tore away um, from the bed. So before we begin, this is what you'll need. Obviously a new PEI sheet, which you can get from the official uh, Prusa store or from the likes of AliExpress. You'll need a solvent with the primary uh, chemical contents uh, known as toluene or delimonene, and this is often uh, known as paint thinner products. You'll need a pair of nitrile gloves, uh, a plastic bag that's the same size or larger than the bed itself, a uh, paper kitchen towel roll, some old newspaper, uh, metal or plastic scraper, Allen keys that came with the printer, uh, a freezer, a thread locker, um, some capped on and or foil tape, a soldering iron, a razor blade or sharp knife, and a small nylon tie. So the first thing to do is to remove the uh, wiring from the bed. Um, you can remove it from the control panel itself, but I chose to actually remove the wiring from the heated bed. And we do this by unscrewing from the bottom the bolt that holds the wire contacts cover in place. And we also need to remove the nylon tie that um, attaches the cover to the wiring and helps it keep it in place um, to prevent stress on the solder joints. So before we desolder the wires from the bed, it's important to keep a note of which wire is actually the positive lead. And in this case, I used a, a red nylon tie. And if you look at the bed itself, um, it's marked, the positive lead is marked with VCC and the negative lead is marked as GND or ground. Once we've done that, then we can desolder the wires from the bed. So next thing is to remove the four bolts um, holding the um, heated bed onto the um, aluminum frame. And what I did is I, is I did this upside down because um, I didn't have anyone to help me at the time. But it's important to remember that the um, thermistor will still be attached to the, um, the heated bed uh, via the capped on tape you can see in the middle there. Um, so remember that if you're going to do this upside down, you need to hold on to the bed, otherwise you will potentially rip the thermistor wire from the bed and maybe damage it. So next we unscrew, but don't remove, the two bolts that secure the Y-axis belt holder to the frame. And the reason we don't remove them is we want to hold everything in place um, using masking tape or something similar. So once we've removed the uh, bed from its frame, we next peel off the tape that holds down the thermistor. To clean up any residual adhesive, um, we use acetone, not meths or isopropyl alcohol. Um, the acetone is much more effective and doesn't damage the bed surface in any way. So before we actually attempt to remove the PEI sheet from the heated bed, we place it in um, a freezer for around 30 minutes to help produce the uh, PEI adhesive tackiness. So while we wait for the he heated bed to cool in the freezer, we can prepare for the actual PEI sheet removal. Um, because this is a messy job, I have a pair of nitrile gloves. Um, and also you'll need a plastic bag, preferably watertight, that is the... Um, larger than your heated bed. Um, 
so that you can actually put the heated bed inside the plastic bag. Uh, we'll also be using some plain kitchen paper towels for soaking the solvent in. And the solvent is toluene or delimonene or a similar type of solvent. Um, and underneath all of that is some old uh, newspaper to catch any of the solvent that happens to leak out. So after 30 minutes of the heated bed being in the freezer, it's now um, very easy to actually peel off the PEI sheet, uh, separating it from its adhesive. And the adhesive is a just a, now a shiny layer, um, a shiny tacky layer on top of the heated bed. So next we cover the PEI adhesive uh, side of the bed with a paper towel and then we want to soak completely soak in the solvent so it covers all of the paper towel and therefore gets the best coverage um, to help dissolve the adhesive glue. So next we place the uh, bed um, with the paper towel soaked in solvent into a plastic bag and we'll just leave it to soak for about uh, 45 minutes. So after waiting about 45 minutes we can now remove the bed from the plastic bag and carefully use a scraper to remove the PEI adhesive which will now be um, a, a mushy texture. So to ensure we have a clean dust free uh, bed surface ready for the new PEI sheet we use uh, meths or isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel um, to clean up the bed. So now we're ready to attach the new PI sheet to the bed. Now instead of um, peeling away the entire backing and trying to lay it onto the bed, um, which increases the likelihood that something's going to go wrong and we're not going to get a smooth surface, we just expose about 20 millimeter um, narrow strip of the adhesive area and then smooth that down first before we move on and do another narrow strip. And we want to keep the PEI sheet taut when we do this so that there's no wrinkles in the sheet as we lay it down. With the um, edge carefully positioned at the bottom of the bed we can then smooth it down making sure we get good adhesion to the bed surface. With the bottom edge uh, now attached to the bed, we can peel away, say, another 30mm uh, wide narrow strip and then smooth that part down. And um, if you like, you can use a scraper to uh, get more uh, coverage as you smooth down the sheet. So we repeat this process of exposing um, a narrow strip of the adhesive backing and then smoothing it down until the entire sheet is laid down onto the, to the bed. And once that's done, we pay careful attention to the edges and the corners so that they're also um, strongly adhering to the print bed. Use a razor blade or a sharp knife to trim any uh, excess uh, PEI sheet um, from the edges of the bed. Next we re-solder the wires onto the bed and secure the wire contacts cover in place with the bolt. And then we want to secure the thermistor in place um, with foil and or capped on tape, something that's heat resistant. In this case, I used foil tape on the first layer and I used capped on tape on top to secure the wires in place. And next, uh, we use a nylon tie to secure the wiring uh, to the cover. Before we reattach the bed uh, to the frame, we first want to test that the heating functionality still works. 
So we just rest it on the bed and then we use the preheat function um, and check that the LED light is on and that the bed in fact does heat up. Next we reattach the bed to its aluminum frame and it's important to use a thread locking product such as Loctite um, to prevent vibration loosening the bolts. And also, which isn't shown here, is to screw in the bolts that hold the Y belt holder uh, onto the bed. So once everything is reassembled, it's important, of course, to uh, recalibrate the printer uh, using the uh, standard Prusa Mark II instructions for uh, recalibration.